this week, baby! Time for another OTR Essential Triple Threat video. Oh, baby! I can't wait, as you can tell. We're ready to have some fun this week, so I hope all of you, 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 are ready to do the same. What's the strike daddy going to talk about this week? Well, I'll tell you what the daddy's going to talk about. I'm going to talk about what looks like a hauntingly horrific WrestleMania 32 card. I'm going to talk about an out-of-touch Southern mama's boy that just can't get enough of sticking his own goddamn foot in his mouth. And I'm going to talk about TNA and their obsession with doing the ridiculous, the dumb, and anything and everything that is a colossal waste of fucking time. So I'm ready. I hope you're ready. No, I said, are you ready? In three, two... One. So leave it to that irrelevant mama's boy, Jim Cornette, to sit there and say something completely and fucking utterly, totally ridiculous yet again. He has a propensity for doing this. Uh, in case you're wondering what I'm talking about, you probably do know. Earlier on this past week, he gave his thoughts about Lucha Underground. He talked about the great production values and how they look professional, how they look like a movie. And that was in large part what was wrong with them. How could anybody take this seriously? You're just basically spit in a greater sense of the word, spitting in the face of professional wrestling, screaming, it's fake, it's fake, it's fake, and it's a representation of everything that's wrong and everything else. And, you know, I sit there and I say, Jim Cornette, shut the fuck up. Me personally, I like the direction that Lucha Underground tried to go. I don't necessarily agree with the product enough or like the style of wrestling enough to actually watch the freaking product and be bothered to go out and find it. But I applaud somebody trying to do something different. Somebody trying to take the business in a different direction, which newsflash, ding dong, dumb dick, is exactly where the fuck the business needs to go, you stupid, stupid son of a bitch. This whole thing of you got to make it feel real and spitting on kayfabe is terrible and they're killing kayfabe. Ding dong, dumb dick, kayfabe's been dead for a long fucking time, you stupid ass. And it ain't coming back. Accept it. And going back to the days where we pretended everything was fucking real, even though we knew deep down inside that this shit wasn't, isn't the fucking answer. This whole thing of you got to present it like it's real for people to feel like it's real. No, the fuck you don't. That's stupid. How many TV shows that we like do we know are completely fucking fake? A lot of people, for whatever reason, like the fucking Walking Dead. Do you really think there are zombies chasing people all over the fucking place and people are running for their lives and trying to kill zombies and trying to figure out how to get away? No! But if you make it good, people suspend their disbelief, and they watch it, and they enjoy it, and God forbid they're fucking entertained by it, you stupid piece of shit! Same thing with goddamn movies! The people that like Star Wars Episode Seven, do they really think that you have things like lightsabers, and that you could create an entire planet, you know, that's hundreds and hundreds of times bigger than the freaking Death Star, and it would explode and not take out the half of the fucking universe. God, this is so stupid. You don't have to present it as real for people to suspend their disbelief. First and foremost, you have to do something that makes the people want to take no. You've got to make it good. You've got to make it interesting. You've got to make it entertaining. Then people aren't going to care so much if it's fake or it's fucking real. It's just so fucking ridiculous. And what I really don't understand is for all the shit that Vince Russo gets, and a lot of it legitimately show, so, Jim Cornette gets so little of it, and I don't understand why. Because to me, Jim Cornette is every bit, if not more so, the representation of what is wrong with the modern professional wrestling business today, as Vince Russo fucking is, bro. And that's the goddamn truth. A lot of you just like Jim Cornette because he sits there and does all these fucking shoot interviews, and he pops off at the mouth, and he makes fun of Kevin Dunn, and he makes fun of Tom Laronitis. Well, you know, at some point in time, Jim Cornette is full of shit, too. And my question to Jim Cornette is if he's such a great fucking mastermind of professional wrestling, if he knows what the wrestling business needs to do today, then you know what, jackass? Why don't you go out there and start a wrestling company of your own and draw some fucking money? Oh, wait. You can't do that. You don't have a wrestling company. And God forbid, if you were running a wrestling company, you'd run that into the fucking ground and draw no goddamn money. So I suggest what you need to do is shut the fuck up. That's what you should do, is shut the fuck up. 
because you have no clue yourself. You have drawn as much money running a promotion for professional wrestling in the past empty dozen years as I fucking have. I mean, you go back through Cornette's history in the early 90s. It's always an excuse with this fucking guy about why something didn't work. Smoky Mountain lasted four goddamn years, and he was even, at the time, a developmental territory for WWE, and that shit eventually folded up. He didn't give you all these excuses that he wants. The bottom line is, he was out of fucking touch. The business needed to go in one direction. He was still trying to run it like it was the cracker territory of the early to mid-fucking 80s. It's ridiculous. And then he goes to OVW, the one glaring beacon of success that Cornette's had as a head booker, as a creative mind. But he had fucking Danny Davis there. Furthermore, he was being supplied down by the WWE talent in large part that was signed by Jim Ross before it was signed by John Laronitis, mind you. And he was being funded in certain ways by WWE. And OVW had existed and continues to exist. So it's not even really a good example. How about when he was sitting there and being in charge of TNA's creative? He was a part of TNA's creative process. He was taking that product 10 or 15 years backwards instead of 10 or 15 years forward like they fucking needed to. And then, oh my God, do I even need to point to ROH? That fucking nunchuck karate ninjutsu jujitsu Brazilian bullshit that he perpetuated on those ROH fans? Why do you think so many people don't even give a fuck about ROH anymore than they used to four or five years ago? And it's not just because of talent leaving. Because talent has always come through that company and went on to bigger and brighter places, if you will. It's because of the ridiculousness of Jim Cornette being in fucking charge. Who booked that shit? You're going after the UFC fans. And who gives a fuck about the UFC fans? The UFC's not even doing that tremendous. They really aren't. So this whole thing, of this whole fantasy that you've got to make it real. And you got to sit there and keep kayfabe. And you got to make the people believe. No, just make it fucking good. And do something different. Do something outside of the box. This is how fucking stupid Cornette is. If he had run the professional wrestling business over the past 20 years, he would have shit all over Stone Cold Steve Austin because he would have said, he'll take that guy seriously drinking a beer like he's going to be able to wrestle anybody afterwards. We don't need any of that. We need Barry Windham. We need real professional wrestling. He'd look at The Rock and be like, this guy's talking about jabronis and pie eating. Who's going to take that seriously? His people's elbow. What a joke. You're never going to draw any money with him, Vincent. I'll tell you who will draw you money. Jeff fucking Jarrett. I mean, Jesus fucking Christ. The fact that people even pay attention to Jim Cornette anymore is astoundingly ridiculous to me. Because he, again, is a representation as much of anybody else in today's professional wrestling business about what's wrong with the professional wrestling business. It's not the marks like me. It's the marks like him that should fucking know better. Those are the biggest marks of all, and they are the biggest single obstacle to why the professional wrestling business is in the fucking vortex of suck that it's in. Because of bullshit opinions and bullshit ideas like his. Did you ever stop and think for a second that maybe Lucha Underground is doing something so different than anybody else in terms of the way they present their product that it might actually work on a bigger stage at some point in time that people might actually like it if for nothing else because of how fresh it would feel? No, 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 no. We need karate. We need jujitsu. Jiu we need to be like the UFC. Ah, oh, shut the fuck up. That's what I would do if I were you, Jim Cornette. I would just shut the fuck up and do your irrelevant podcast and reflect back on those glory days of the Midnight Express where you didn't draw as much money as the Rock and Roll Express and shut the fuck up. You know, to me, in the history of the professional wrestling business, no company has done more to shoot themselves in the foot consistently time after time after time throughout their history and done more to waste everybody's time than TNA. And, you know, it's like when you think about TNA, what's their greatest accomplishment? Is that come June they will have been in existence for 14 years. They've survived. Boy, that's some fucking accomplishment. And, you know, what happened recently to me is just another example of exactly what has ailed TNA for so many goddamn years as a wrestling company and why they are so frustrating as a company to look at from the outside in. I mean, let me get this straight. You do Bound for Glory, you have Matt Hardy win the TNA World Championship just to immediately vacate it to waste a couple of months of time as you're transitioning from Destination America to Pop TV to do this tournament to where when you get back on Pop TV now, your new network home, you decide to do a tournament just for EC3 to ultimately win the belt right back. So you're basically spitting in a bunch of people's faces by wasting three months of fucking time. 
How dumb and stupid is that? Only to, mind you, a couple of weeks later, come right back and now do a double turn where you flip EC3 face and you turn Matt Hardy heel and you have Matt Hardy recapture the TNA World Heavyweight Championship. Only TNA would sit there and think it was a good idea to put the belt on the Hardy brother that frankly nobody gives a fuck about. Oh, I know, he's got a nice Twitter following. Oh, pfft, I'm fucking that shit. Only TNA would think it would be a good idea to put the world title on the less charismatic, less entertaining, less in shape, less money drawing, fucking fat lardy. I mean, Jesus Christ, who today would actually pay money to go see this fat, out-of-shape windbag wrestle a fucking match and, of all things, sit there and advertise him as a fucking world champion and expect people to take your company seriously? Matt Hardy! Fat Lardy! The next time he does a sit-up will be the first time he's done a sit-up in this goddamn decade! That's atrocious! Matt fucking Hardy is a TNA World Heavyweight Champion! So you've got the second-rate Hardy as your top guy, and you expect people to take you fucking seriously? How is this building anything to the future? How is this doing anything to create captivating or entertaining television right now? How is this anything other than all of the representation of the problems that you put yourself in time after time after time over the past 13-plus fucking years? Fat fucking Lardy! This asshole's body is his vessel to make a living, and he cares so much about it that he's got as big of a belly as fucking Chris Hero does. That's pathetic. And TNA decided to reward him with his championship being defended successfully at the buffet table. They said, hey, you know what I see? I see a guy that should be a heel fucking world champion. This company is fucking stupid. No matter what. I try to convince myself, no matter how many times I try to fool myself into trying to come back in the back door and watch this crap, is this type of stupid shit right here that makes me glad that I don't watch Impact Wrestling anymore, because it all ultimately ends up being a waste of fucking time. This company is stupid, they don't learn from any of their previous mistakes, they're doomed to fucking repeat them, and frankly as a company they deserve every fucking thing that they get. A second rate fat lardy is their world heavyweight champion. Stupid. You know, I was sitting there today and I was thinking about what the WrestleMania 32 card might look like and I gotta tell you something. It's hauntingly horrific. If all of you non-believers out there haven't started getting on your knees and putting your hands together and bowing your heads and praying, I'm telling you this much. On everything that is the Hunter, the Hearst, and the Helmsley, you need to start saying your prayers because this shit looks terrible. This Mania card looks brutal. I know some of you will say, well, of all the guys that are out of action and everything else because of injury, you know, that's one problem, sure. But injuries are no excuse. At the end of the day, that's the WWE's fault for not having deeper bench strength, by not having more interesting and compelling characters and more compelling options, and, you know, a little more than two months from the biggest show of the damn year. Mind you, that's going to be at AT&T Stadium, which is supposed to be such an important show for this company. You're going to be at that magnificent shrine to Jerry Jones' freaking ego, where you're trying to draw over 100,000 people. And just let's take a look quickly at the potential WrestleMania 32 card that we've got. And we're going to have probably Roman Reigns versus Triple H for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Praise God! Because we need that match. And by the end of that show, you might be praying to sh Triple H and asking him, God, please save this night because you're the only hope we have left. That match could be good in many different ways, even if you don't like the potential result. Then what else you've got? It looks like you've got Bray Wyatt versus Brock Lesnar. Now, that's a fucking fart and a half. Who the fuck wants to see that? I mean, seriously. Bray Wyatt didn't beat The Undertaker at WrestleMania. And frankly, he really doesn't beat anybody of any consequence or significance at any pay-per-views. Now he's going to be a legitimate challenger to the Beast Incarnate, the fucking Destroyer, the Conqueror of Worlds in the Streak. He's going to be the guy that can overcome Suplex City, bitch. Fucking Brock Lesnar. 
I don't think so. The dynamics of this are stupid. The whole thing is stupid. Then what else do we got? A Divas title match. And like I said before, one redeeming quality could be if you do just Sasha Banks versus Charlotte at WrestleMania 32, you've got Ric Flair in one corner, you've got Snoop in the other corner, need I say more? Maybe you make it a triple threat with Becky Lynch, and it's whatever. You'll have some type of Divas title match on the show. And funny thing is, it'll probably be one of the best work matches of the night for those of you that give a shit about it. You probably have an Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal that will more likely than not end up being on the pre-show. You're going to have an Undertaker match in there somewhere, you would think. Um, you know, to me, the best option for a taker in terms of a match this year is sit this show out this year. Because who is a really interesting or compelling opponent or option for him at this point? The best you've got is probably Kevin Owens? Kevin Owens? I mean, are we that far down the totem pole where we're going to Kevin Owens to face off with the motherfucking Undertaker at a WrestleMania? Is our bench strength that poor? Is the WWE hurting in that bad of a way? Has it gotten that bad where a Kevin Owens fat ass is looking at facing The Undertaker at a WrestleMania? What the fuck has this clown done to earn that spot with that guy at that show? A period. Surely you'll have some type of tag title match involving the New Day and the Usos. Maybe you could throw in the Dudleys and you could make it a TLC match and that could be a highlight of the night because God knows again they're probably going to fucking need it. They're going to need it. You know, and then you try to think about it. You know, a U.S. title match with Callisto is probably going to be on the damn pre-show. You know, Dean Ambrose is probably going to have a match against somebody. Who's it going to be against? You're going to send them that freaking AJ Styles, and they're going to wrestle for the IC title? Yeah, the hardcores will fucking beat off to that shit, but, you know, do I really want to see that? No, I don't. Do I want to see Dean Ambrose versus Chris Jericho for the IC title? I most certainly fucking don't. Do I want to see Chris Jericho versus AJ Styles? Frankly, no, I fucking don't because I already saw it on goddamn Raw. You know, what are they going to do with AJ Styles? What are they going to do with Dean Ambrose? What are they going to do with Chris Jericho? You know, what are they going to do with The Undertaker? I mean, two months to go and you've just got so many questions and some will try to spin this as a positive thing if they've got all these possibilities. Possibilities for what? Possibilities for the what the suck and the fuck. That's what they've got possibilities for. I mean, this card looks terrible. Terrible. Only one match right now has any surefire redeemable qualities to it. And that's the match between Roman Reigns and God for the title. And that's it. The rest of the show I take a fucking pass at. That's terrible. Injuries or not, that's no excuse. Shame on the WWE for the bullshit they're about to give us in two months at WrestleMania 32. So, you've heard from me. Now, I want to hear from you, brothers and sisters, too, I suppose. Do you think I'm on the money in terms of Jim Cornette and his thoughts on Lucha Underground? Do you... Do you agree with me that he's an overrated fucking windbag and he wouldn't know a good concept or idea for professional wrestling if it bit him in the ass? Or am I completely wrong and is he totally right and is it Lucha Underground just a shitty product and it makes the wrestling business look stupid? You know, to TNA and they're making Matt Hardy a world champion. Did you like the double turn? Do you like a heel Matt Hardy as a world champion? Or do you think, like I do, that it makes the company look fucking amateurish and second rate, and it, again, is nothing more than a waste of fucking time? And what say you about the potential for this WrestleMania 32 card? Because I sure would love to hear from some of you if you think that this card has a lot of possibilities and potential for awesomeness. Because I don't know where the fuck you're looking at for that. Because if you found it, please let me know. Please let me know where it's at. Because at this moment, the only hope, the only shot that I see we've got is to pray to God. Because God is the only one ugh, that is going to save that night on April 3rd, I assure you. Ugh.